today. Well, thanks um, for having me. Of course. And it was great meeting you for the first time last week for a little coffee. And um, uh, we met over Twitter. Yes, we did. Yes. Social media is a good thing. It's a great thing. <laughs> have you met other people from social media that you... I have. I've met a number of great people through social media. Actually, Twitter, I think, is number one in terms of me reaching out to people through DM, which kind of sounds creepy, but really you can find some great people. Yes. Um, and LinkedIn as well is definitely great for that. LinkedIn. Mm hmm Ah, so, but don't, doesn't LinkedIn not allow you to message someone unless you're already connected together? Well, you, ha you can message them, but essentially you have to send them a connection request. So I think you're only given like what 50 characters. So you really have to make it brief. But if you're able to fit into that message, you know why you want to connect with them or why you want to meet with them, it really is great. I mean, I've done it a bunch of times and successfully landed meetings. So, yes. you know, I'm an advocate for it. That's cool. And hmm. so, what do you do by day? What's your? So I work for a retail real estate company, uh, managing digital marketing for shopping malls. Um, really love my job, I have to say. It's really great working in retail and especially right now when really people are interested in how digital can really integrate into the shopping center and how you can really make shopping centers relevant. I mean, obviously people are shopping online all the time and that has really posed a challenge for shopping centers, but I love my job because I essentially get to prove, you know, why social media and digital marketing tactics are really relevant for the shopping center and that's what you really need to invest in in order to remain competitive. And do you then use those techniques for yourself? Do you find yourself using them for personal, your personal use? Definitely. I mean, what I do in my day job is really aligned with what I'm interested in outside of work. So I find that a lot of the same tactics and strategies that I use for my work, um, I'm able to apply to my own kind of passion projects on the side. Mm -hmm. And what's one that you really discovered at work that you thought, oh, wow, I'm got to use that secret for myself. Hmm. Well, essentially Snapchat, I think, is the most useful and the best platform that I've really had a chance to use at work and mm -hmm. uh, apply into my own personal life, I would say. I really want to start using it on a personal basis as well as Periscope, sort of playing around with that and just seeing how important video is as a tool yeah. uh, for content marketing. And so using it for work has really made me realize how I want to use that in my own personal life. Who would you say the audience is on Snapchat? Definitely a younger audience, uh, but I think it's important for you to have a number of tools that appeal to different audiences. So, you know, for example, a lot of malls, they want to focus on maybe the yummy mummy sort of target market. Uh, but Snapchat, I find it's that younger audience, but there's always going to be different kinds of people that are coming to your center. And so you want to make sure that you have platforms uh, that appeal to each of the groups that are coming to your mall. So, Of course, of course. So um, I noticed you on Twitter because you are a blogger and yes. I didn't even know about your other things. I just saw your <laughs> blog and I thought it was cool. So tell me about your blog. So my blog, really it's been a project that's a long time coming. Um, kind of came up with the idea, I would say about two years ago, just sort of playing out with the concept. I knew I always wanted to blog and working in social media and communications, but I wasn't sure what I wanted it to be about. Uh, but two of the things that are really important to me are sort of personal development, communication, social media, but also fashion and style. And I knew that I wanted to find a way to merge those passions, even though it sounds like they don't really blend well together. But I wanted to find a way to do that because that's what's interesting to me. And I didn't want to start a blog that wasn't representative of the things that I like. Uh, so came up with Do Well, Dress Well. And it sort of went from there, bought the domain, still kind of sat there and wasn't sure what I really wanted to do with it. Uh, but on February 1st, finally launched it, and really it's been great. It's been a fun project for me to work on in terms of you know my content skills and managing social media for myself and just sort of brainstorming all the different ways that I can expand uh, the blog. And essentially, this blog is an extension of my personal brand and so how I can build it and hopefully build the blog to be the best that it can be. Mm -hmm. Now, what was your biggest challenge in deciding you know, having the domain, you said, for a while, you sat on it. What was the thing that prevented you from deciding, okay, today I'm going to start blogging? I was nervous about consistency. Um, and, of course, working a nine-to-five job and being really busy. And I've always sort of done online courses and just life in general. I didn't want to start it. And then, you know, two weeks later, I realized I can't do it. 
I knew that if I started it, I wanted to be consistent and I wanted to keep with it. So I really just wanted to reach that point in my life where I'm like, you know what? I actually can do this. I have the time to do it, but not only the time to do it, but the time to do it well. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I really tried to create quality content. And the moment that I realized that I'm not able to create quality content, then, you know, there's going to be an issue there. But as of right now, I know that I can create that quality content in terms of, you know, working ahead and scheduling and just doing what I need to do to balance the blog and, you know, personal life and work and everything else. So I'm hoping that I really can keep with it. Now, something I liked on your your blog page was that when I scrolled over each of the pictures on the front, there's like a little, almost a paragraph, whole paragraph of text, which I thought was really different Mm -hmm. for a blog that you scroll over and you can actually read into it rather than just learn more, you know, one word. So what made you decide to do that? Um, I really want to be different with this blog and one of my big things is that I didn't want to be just the average blogger. I don't want people to think of me and put me in a category with other people and just trying to find ways to differentiate myself and so I'm always sort of researching new and innovative ways that I can make my blog stand out. I still continue to do that and that was just one of the ways that I was able to do that. So you noticed it so that means that it worked. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm a reader. I love to read and so you gave me a lot of content right there that makes me want to click on it more because Mm -hmm. I have a better idea of what's going on there when I scroll over is the word okay I don't need to bother (laughs) I've seen the picture I'm just there for the picture so what makes you um decide on what to write for for the images that you pick or how do you pick the images that you're going to take take or put up well, I, I definitely start with the content, mm-hmm. um, just brainstorming a bunch of different ideas. I write out all my content, and then I think about the image last, to be quite honest. I've heard of some people that sort of start with their image, mm-hmm. um, but I like to start with my content, writing everything out, and then thinking about what image could best represent what I want to write about. Wow. Well, I see you read um, Girl Boss. What did you think? I love Girl Boss. I have to say, out of all the books that I've read and I read, a lot of books that Girl Boss is definitely, I would say, in my top 10. Mm-hmm. Um, just in terms of the way that she let her personality sort of come through. And I love those sort of books where people aren't shy to sort of share their personal stories. Uh, and I just really felt as though I was able to experience it all with her. But of course, it's just really inspiring. I mean, I want to be a girl boss, you know, in quotation. Yes. <laughs> but um, essentially just sort of working my way up. And I know that success is not going to come overnight. But just being able to see that other people have done it successfully, it just was such an inspiring read. So Yes, I agree. I really loved that book. And I, mm-hmm. I loved it because it was so honest about how hard it was for her to get started and she's doing everything herself you know she's the photographer she's mending the clothes and she's picking them and she's Mm -hmm. shipping them out and that's for two years you know so and really it just teaches you you need to be humble I mean success again is not going to come overnight and so you're going to have to start doing things all on your own but eventually you know if you work hard and invest time then you will get to that point where you can hire people and start your own company. But a lot of people just think that, okay, I'm going to start a business and I'm going to become a millionaire overnight. Like, sorry, it really doesn't work that way. So I think that book was able to really put things into perspective and just remind people that they have to put in the work to get where they want to be. Yes, unless you're DVF, which I read her book right after that, Mm -hmm. Diane von Furstenberg, and it was so, you know, and I married the prince. (laughs) <laughs> then I started oh, my Unless you marry a prince, then yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then we had, fr- Naomi Campbell is my friend. And, you know, it, I found it was very hard to relate to her life story because it was so foreign and, oh, and way exactly. beyond. Like, it's a dream story. Even though she still did have difficulties, you know, it wasn't easy all the way along. But when you start off with money and connections and all these other things, laid out for you it is a bit hard to like feel for her <laughs> I do 100% <laughs> yeah, yeah um okay and so where can people find your blog and connect with you so you can find me at uh, www.dowelldresswell.com I'm also on twitter uh, so at dowelldresswell uh, you can find me on Instagram at dowelldresswell as well. Uh, I also have my own personal Twitter account at Chanel, C-H-A-N-E-L-E-M-C-F. Okay, cool. And you're on Pinterest. 
Oh, I'm also on Pinterest too at Do Well Dress Well. <laughs> Fantastic for those of us who are addicted at night to just wanting oh, to look at nice Oh, of course, it's a rabbit hole once you get started. <laughs> not come out. Yes, and also it says here you do, you um, provide services. Tell me about that. So that's something that I'm hoping to expand into in the next couple of months, uh, but it really is going to be an extension of Do Well, Dress Well. So the Do Well services will be things like personal branding, helping with resumes, and really just helping you build your online personal brand. Uh, and then the Dress Well side of it will be personal styling, helping you to develop a wardrobe uh, that's suitable for work that not only makes you feel good, but look good. Wow, that's clever. You do well, you dress well, and do well. Just exactly. Well. So the two, they're able to blend together. Very nice. <laughs> and um, as I said, I love your hat. I love it. Thank you. Thank you. H and M. Okay, I was just gonna say. And where do you pick up <laughs> the hat? It's my favorite like, store. H and M. Okay. Um, what else should anyone know about the Do Well Dress Well brand? Um, really that it's a brand that's committed to quality and in everything that I do in terms of representing Do Well Dress Well and being the face of Do Well Dress Well, um, I want to be known for quality work uh, and also eventually providing services that really just help you in your life. I want to essentially be that online resources that professional women can turn to when they need to, you know, get some tips and tricks on how to do well and dress well because the two do work together and essentially people do look at you and make perception based on how you dress but it's also the kind of work that you produce so I think that it's important to have a focus on both elements uh, of your life mm -hmm. and that's what I'm hoping the blog will be an important resource for people. Cool and do you take all of the photos yourself? Do you design your website yourself? Uh, yeah so my website I was able to uh, build myself through WordPress so that was a definitely an interesting experience and thankfully I have my husband who has served as my Instagram husband as they say and he takes pictures for my blog as well as my best friend so nice. very lucky to have the two of them. Good, <laughs> good teamwork. You know there are a lot of you know, bloggers with people who help them, people behind the blog. But oh, you never, yeah. you know, you never hear about it but it's just an acknowledged thing. Everybody has like a small team behind it. Not a, mm -hmm. not an easy thing to produce. One style tip. One style tip. Yeah. Um, say invest in a pair of black pumps. Okay. I find that they are the most useful thing to have in your wardrobe because when you're going to work and you're one of the dress down after work or on the weekend, they're just the staple item that you need in your closet. So black pumps, and then I'd also say a black dress as well. Okay, LBD <laughs> and black pumps. Very nice. Good advice. Great advice. So thanks, what? Chanel. Oh, thank you.